Well, checking in on my own flooded telecom batteries, it seems that I've come across a very dangerous situation, which is supposed to be one of those that never happen and cannot happen. Because if you take a look in that little trench there with the battery caps, you can see that it's full of liquid. And it won't show up on camera, but if we look at the cells, one of them has overflown. Now this is very, very strange, because I have maintained these batteries to the proper electrolyte levels. So, what this means is that, for some reason, this cell, the one that's overflowing, I believe it is one of these two, second or third, has a very, very large hydrogen bubble inside of it, that, for some reason, has not risen to the surface, and thus has uh, caused enough pressure underneath the electrolyte to push it out through the cap. And uh, just in order to verify that this isn't water, here I've got a small cup full of baking soda. So let's take a small sample, just a little teeny bit of this of this fluid and drip it in there. That is most certainly filled with sulfuric acid. Water would not react that violently. So, this is rather tricky. I now need to find some way to evacuate the fluid on top and then get rid of the bubble inside of a cell. I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. And here is a better view of the cell that has overflown. You can see the electrolyte level is right above the maximum, right by the minimum on the cells on the sides, but you can't see a level on the one in the middle. That's usually because the level is too low, but in this case, it's way too high. Okay, so now after ensuring that I have copious amounts of baking soda and water at my disposal in case of a major spill, what I'm going to do is open up one of the cells that has a low electrolyte level in order to allow this area to drain. This is because if I were to open the flooded cell and try to extract the bubble inside of it, it would, uh, when the bubble bursts, splash considerably. So I really need to get the fluid level below the level of the corks in order to prevent any major splashing. And uh, I'm going to use my specific gravity meter in order to move electrolyte to the other cells just to get the final level down. I'm also wearing a face mask and uh, I have a path prepared to the bathroom in case something goes horribly wrong. So, let's do this. I should note now that most of the extra electrolytes has been drained, but in a situation like this, handling the emergency safely is a far, far higher priority than saving the battery. That was almost an entire minimax spam of electrolytes at the surface of that battery. The previously low cell is now full to the maximum marker. So now I need to reallocate the remaining electrolytes to a different cell. I'm now going to open the flood cell. This is where things might get ugly. 
since if that, that large bubble decides to come out, well, it's only going one way and that's upward. The electrolyte level is now below the top of the battery. So the worst danger is over now since the surface area of the electrolyte now is considerably larger inside of the cell. It doesn't have just have this little one little outlet for any gases to escape. So now I'm just going to take a specific gravity measurement carefully of this battery. And finally that meshes just fine. And that is as much as I can deposit into that cell without overfilling it. So now that the immediate danger of exposed electrolyte has been resolved, I'm going to disconnect this battery and try to move it aside with the corks closed and give it a slight shake in order to try to jerk out the bubble of that cell. I'm assuming it is a bubble. It could, of course, be a case of one of the other cells overflowing considerably and uh, the electrolyte just seeping into that particular cell in case the cork had a bad seal. But uh, that will have to be a case of study of after I get the cell disconnected. I am aware of how dangerous this battery setup is, just to due to the fact that there is no quick disconnect available. The entire parallel battery bank is fused and can be disconnected at a moment's notice. However, ind individual batteries can't. That is part of the reason that I'm going to replace this entire system. It simply is not safe and I certainly am going to hurry doing that after this incident. Due to the way this is set up, I actually need to disconnect the entire battery bank in order to do this, since this is a positive lead. So, lights out. I'm now ready to pull out the battery and give it a little shake. Strangely, while there was bubbling, the critically overfilled cell did not drop much in level. The others, however, for instance the one I dumped electrolytes into, as well as the other one I dumped into, dropped considerably. So, this indicates that the extra electrolyte in this cell comes somehow from another cell. Because if this one had a contract bubble inside it, well, it would have bubbled to the top by now. I doubt any bubble could survive that treatment. And it would be dropping. So, now that the battery has been shaken, I'm reasonably certain that it's safe to take all the caps off. So, I'm now going to do a specific gravity measurement on this battery in order to see if some particular cell has been weak or shorted and would cause excessive gassing of any of the others because the only mechanism by which a lead acid battery can make its electrolyte level rise is by forming gas or having some foreign object introduced into these cells which is not the case here I'm very perplexed as to what's happened here 
I was not expecting anything of this nature to ever happen to my bank since it is reasonably well cared for.
Measuring the specific gravity levels of this battery, it indeed does measure differently now than it did when I put it in service, and this also happens to be one of the poorest performing batteries out of this batch. So, as for the likelihood of failure, it certainly was higher in this battery than in the rest of them. However, I need to research what actually has caused this and uh, what the performance of the battery is like now that this has happened, because the electrolytes of the different cells has been mixed and the levels were not entirely matched. Indeed, all cells except cells 4 and 6 from left to right measured kind of poorly. So, there certainly is something funny going on. What that is, well, that will be the subject for another video. I hope you found this interesting. I hope I put a good example on how to deal with something like this in a reasonably safe manner. Of course, the battery disconnect method of this battery bank is appalling. It is absolutely dangerous. And I am not proud of connecting the map like that, but it's what was practical at the time. So, cheerio. Now I've just got to check the rest of them in order to make sure nothing similar has happened there.